Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Criterion Connection. I'm Wade. And I'm Joe. And today we're doing, I think, our first Jim Jarmusch film. Very much so. And I think maybe our first Western. I believe it's also the first yes. Western we did. Uh, we teased it last week. We made it pretty obvious what we're doing. We are doing 1995's Dead Man, spine number 919. Mm -hmm. Yeah, starring Johnny Depp. And a bunch of other people. There's a lot of really big name actors and like character actors that you might recognize. It's got that guy. And, uh, and you might not. You might not recognize him. I think him he was the sheriff. He was the guy that was in Scrooged. He was the boss of Scrooged. The sheriff. The sheriff. What was his name? God. It's been, I, I watched this movie a couple days ago. And I went through. I don't know anything about a sheriff. Two days. Worth Robert of, Mitchum is in it. That's what I'm thinking of. He's, he's John Dickinson. I think that's right, right with him. Yeah. I've been through a little background. I watched this days ago, and then I went through a two-day film festival full of films, a Maryland film festival. It's so not my fault. My brain is burnt, so I might forget some things about this movie, but I remember the general feel and if I liked it or not. So Okay. Yeah. But yeah, it has uh, Crispin Glover, who is... He's, he's in it barely. He is the Crispin of Glover's. Um, uh, yeah. so you want me to take care of this? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Since you don't know what's going on. Apparently I, I did watch it though. I don't uh, know why I can't remember anything. So it starts off, uh, with, you're following Johnny Depp's character, who's named William Blake, um, which is exactly the same name as the famous poet and artist, William Blake. And he's traveling across the country... Um, and they don't really tell you that. They just show you with showing him and then the other passengers on the car. And then he kind of drifts off and fades and fades back in or dissolves back in. And it's different. And, it, and you get less and less, like, you have properly dressed city folk in the beginning. And you get more and more to the frontiersmen. So he's obviously going out west, probably out to California or something. Uh, yeah. It has to be, like, California, Oregon, somewhere on the West Coast. Yeah. Um, for reasons that happen later in the film. And he's promised a job as an accountant. He leaves from Cleveland, goes cross-country to this metalworks place, only to find that he came a month too late. And so he's out there on the West Coast, has no money because he used all of it to get out there and... Just kind of screwed. Yeah. Uh, meets a girl at a tavern, outside of a tavern. Um, and they go to her place, and get shit. to know each other a little better. And we don't know what exactly happened. And, but then, and then shit just hits the fan. Yeah. And then a guy comes home that was her ex-boyfriend. And that kind of sets us up for the plot that happens. Um, and it ends up with Johnny Depp getting shot, and leaves town on a stolen horse. Uh, and and, like a Native and American goes, American. yeah, he gets found by a Native American, played by Gary Farmer. Uh, his name being later being revealed, he prefers to be called Nobody. Um, and they just kind of roam through the countryside, and Nobody becomes really obsessed with him because his name's William Blake, and he, Nobody knows William Blake as the poet and artist. And I guess, uh, I don't know much about Native American culture, but I do know this movie is praised uh, for somebody who's a non-Native making a movie that involves Natives and kind of capturing some of that stuff. But I guess it's a thing where uh, people don't generally have the same name as somebody else. Like they do in Western culture and English yeah. a lot. Like, even in the same family with Junior, the second, third, fourth, you know. Um, so he thinks it's the poet and artist, William Blake. Yeah. And basically resolves to help William Blake get back to the spirit world. Which is where you think he came from, because, you know, William Blake had been dead for a long time before this. He's a dead man. Yeah, he's a dead man. <clears throat> Especially when... The bullet is, like, right next to his heart in the beginning. And in response, uh, previously mentioned Robert Mitchum's character, John Dickinson, sends out... It is, it is the one I'm thinking of, yeah. Yeah. 
sends out a bunch of hitmen and then starts putting up rewards and getting the law to what, try and track <clears throat> down Johnny Depp and kill him or yeah. bring him back. Because that was the guy's son. For justice. Yeah, it was his son yeah. that was uh, Thel's ex-boyfriend. Yeah. And <clears throat> so you just kind of follow him on this journey. And uh, it's I, not super plot rich, but there's yeah. a lot of really interesting characters that come up. And John just, Hurt's in it? Yeah, John. There's a ton of great actors. I think he in pops it. in it. Yep. <laughs> just like uh, hey, Bob. Billy Bob Thornton's in that scene as well as, uh, I think his name's John Harris? So Lance I, can't, I can't remember his Lance name. Lance Hendrickson, damn it. Lance Hendrickson's one of the hitmen. Uh, but it's well, of all these. He is. It, there's so many uh, great actors. And what's great to me is there's so rich with characterization. Like they have of the way they speak, they have their own mannerisms, they have really kind of defined. Like you delve into some of their backstories. And. It's, it's just a really cool... Like, I also love how Nobody does not look like the typical Native American character mm -hmm. you see in every movie. Any, uh, any Westerns, always the long-haired uh, well, Native he's American. Got long hair. I know, but he's more like a, a chubbier. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Well, and, and the interesting thing is, even better, is that he's an actual you know descendant of Native Americans. Yeah. He's part of, the I think, the Cayuga tribe. Yeah. It's a um, western that has its own style. Well, this is actually Robert Mitchum's last movie before he died. So, there you go. Um, a little fun fact. He's, uh, <laughs> like, this movie is a western that has a style. A lot of westerns can be dry. Mm -hmm. Very, very dry. This one has its own its own spin. It's It feels kind of fresh. Mm -hmm. uh, but it still feels like it's... It's in black and white. It still feels like it could be a western. Yeah. And, and, and it's very... Some people have called it an acid western. I know Jim Jarmusch calls it a psychedelic western. And I get it because it's kind of... It's not what's happening that's important. It's kind of like the meaning behind things. Is that... <clears throat> it's the journey itself that's important. And also there's a sweet spot where John, in John Depp's career where like the mid nine, literally to mid-90s <laughs> was his like... Like you had Gilbert Grape, you had Ed Wood, you had this like... You had this, you had Benny and June, yeah. which is another really if good you put one. That, Edward Scissorhands. That is the best Johnny Depp. And then, so, like, once you reach 2000, he goes real downhill. Especially now, his career's gone, like, play, nosedive for, other, for reasons aside from his acting. But, but everybody in the movie is great. Oh, yeah. And, and there's a lot of, you know, like I said, there's big stars, there's character actors that are oh, well known. Let's talk about who the biggest star is Neil Young. Oh, yeah, the. Uh, Neil Young does the music. The score is so good. And he basically improvs it as he watches the movie. Um, and then, like, of course, he goes back and re-records some other stuff. I believe there's a feature on the, the Criterion release. Where you can watch them, yeah. Yeah, they have that little excerpt on YouTube. I yeah. was like, I'd, I'd buy the DVD just for it's, that. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, and the music's really cool. I know some people might get a little fed up at parts because it like overpowers the dialogue in certain places that's more of the editing it's not really on neil young, neil young it's not on neil young no but uh it's more, i well, it's i sound design editing. i super enjoy it personally i like a lot of like acid western kind of stuff oh and like, also john Depp did fear and loathing yeah he did fear and loathing around <clears> that <throat> time with terry gilliam so he was doing all kinds of weird movies with all the weird people tim yeah. burton jim jarmusch uh terry gilliam yeah, yeah. all around that time that's also a criteria movie we didn't do. We could. Yeah, we could. Um, so, what what are your general thoughts? I thought it was great. Uh, it's not the best western I've ever seen, mm -hmm. but it's a pretty good one because usually westerns can either it's either got my attention like Tombstone will get my attention, and there's Unforgiven another one. Unforgiven. Unforgiven. Great one around that time. Uh, but then there's ones that are very forgettable, like, uh, what was it, Home Home Range, the, Home on the Range, I think yeah. it was called. Like, that was very forgettable. There's, the one, uh, there's one with John Travolta recently, forgettable. The Open Range, I remember. Open, that's the word, not and Home the, range. And there's open like range. Appaloosa. They're, sometimes they're just really forgettable. Yeah, they're very forgettable Westerns. This no one matter how not. good they are, just it's something in the DNA sometimes. This like, one is, and also I'm... Slightly like in this very I mean this Jim Jarmusch phase, mm -hmm. so it really you kept bugging me to do Stranger Than Paradise for a while. Yes, and I, 
I wasn't opposed to it, but we just kept having other ones edited out. <clears throat> yeah. And then, and then Dead Man was coming out on Criterion. I'm like, I we have to do Dead Man. Yeah. Because I really wanted to watch it, and it's coming to Criterion. And the, probably the best way to watch it is probably going to be buy it, or I think you can rent it on Amazon. Because it's now on Filmstruck. Not yet. You can't rent not yet. it. You it's can't. brand new. Well, it's not brand new. It's brand new uh, for Criterion. Oh, that's true. I'm talking in general. Like, it's, uh, it, it was, was on, really hard to find. It was on Netflix for a little bit. Um, yeah. I have the old Blu-ray uh, of the regular release. There's DVDs. You can find them in dollar bins in a lot of places. But uh, the Criterion edition is probably going to be where you get your bang for your buck. Especially with all the special features they come with. And also the movie wasn't, wasn't long. It wasn't... It's two hours. It has, well, it has a very good pace to it to where it doesn't feel like it's forever. It just keeps going. just keeps yeah. going. And yeah. the characters don't wear out their welcome. Nope. There's, there's a big ensemble cast of actual famous actors. Well, it's like... Not ensemble, but it's a good yeah, amount of actors. And then... They're almost like cameos a lot. Yeah, and, and they don't yeah. they don't overstay their welcome. The nope. main characters stay where they're supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, there's, you know, Johnny Depp does a really good performance. Um, Everybody does. Yeah. yeah. So I'd say... And I think the yeah. writing's really clever, and and I think it's... This is kind of what I would have rather Hateful Eight been. Yeah. It's what I would rather Django uh, Unchained be. Uh, I don't mean to pick on Quentin Tarantino, but he's done the two high-profile westerns recently. Uh, there's other really good ones like Bone Tomahawk and Slow West. But Dead Man, this is kind of what I would have rather seen. <laughs> yeah, I saw one this weekend called Damsel. It's pretty good. But, oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's got Ron Pattinson. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, and, and then there's other ones that have been made that are kind of forgettable, yeah. or there's been remakes, and there's been quality stuff oh, coming you mean, out. Oh, you mean, you mean uh, Magnificent Seven? I haven't seen that yet. No, I'm talking about uh, 310 to Yuma, oh. which is a good remake. With a Criterion edition uh, of the original, so we'll definitely get to that at some point. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, uh, considering how much I've talked in this episode. Yeah. Uh, buy, right, or skip? Buy. Um, I think it's a solid buy. I think this kind of, it's taking something that is a little odd for people, like the genre and the style of filmmaking it is, but I think it makes it palatable when you can have all these stars and they're all putting on great performances. The dialogue is there. It doesn't hold your hand, but it's still enough for you to parse out, um, which is really cool. They never subtitle any of the uh, native language. So, like, I don't know what the guy says, but if you do understand those languages, there's a little extra yeah. for you because it's actual native languages. Yeah, and, and you and you can figure out what the story is without them. Yeah, <clears throat> and, and, subtitle. And, and I think it's a really cool, different kind of western because, you know, I grew up in the time where the westerns from like the '30s to the through the '60s are all like, let's hunt down the Indians, and or it's like John Wayne and John Wayne doing his John Wayne. Yeah, and some of them are great, but. You know, a lot of them are very much the same thing over and over again, and this is a much more nuanced take on it. Yeah, if you like westerns, I mean, it, 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 it ain't no the good, the bad, and ugly, but <laughs> no, well, I, well, I, I like it a lot. It's yeah. up there with for me. It's up there with the Searchers, Good, Bad, and the Ugly, and a lot of those. But it, it does something different. You know, like I, I compare this kind of more. It's a more palatable kind of version of like El Topo. Uh, because it's 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 a movie about a journey, for the character. It's it's a very it's a very uh, searchers it's, too. It's, it's very it's very friendly to people who don't watch westerns. Yeah. So when it's not related to westerns, mm -hmm. you might like this western. Yeah. You know, it's <clears throat> uh, worth I'd, a shot. It's worth a shot. Definitely. Uh, I don't own it, but I'd probably buy it. I'd probably say buy. Uh, it's it's a movie that doesn't like, even if like you rent it, you'd probably buy it. It's worth buying. Yeah. It's probably, like, most of the versions we talked about are very cheap it's one, when it's, you can it's, find them. It's one of Johnny Depp's best performances, I think. Um, yeah. I, the, I'd I put that up there. It, it was in that time where he, 
couldn't do anything but hit a home run with a performance. Yeah. So. And then he worked with Tim Burton too many times. Yeah, and yeah. probably messed up his brain a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> then it was in Tusk. Anyway, that's our review about of Dead Man. Uh, what did you think? Let us know in the comment section below. I'm sorry to remind you about that. Uh, please just hit the subscribe button. Please uh, let us know what your favorite Jim Jarmusch movie that we can do. He, does, he has yeah. a lot on Criteria, a lot. Yeah, and he's a really cool filmmaker. Yeah. And I wish he's there got were, awesome hair. And I can't wait for Ghost Dog to finally make it to the Criterion Collection so I can track down a nice copy of also, it. Also, did you realize, did you, in, did you notice that the collector in the Marvel Universe looks like Jim Jarmusch? Doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Anyway, so let us know in the comment section below. Next week, though, we are doing, and I thought, we, I thought you know, we usually tease these things, but I thought we should just tell them so they can watch it, and then they, we can talk about it. That'd be cool. We can make yeah. it more of a conversation than yeah. us talking it. <clears throat> so That'd next cool. week, uh, it's actually coming out, I think, actually next week on Blu-ray, uh, it is Mishima. Oh, Mishima, the, was it the Life of Four Chapters? Yeah, life four of, chapters uh, of life, a or? Life of Four Chapters. Yeah. Um, about the Japanese uh, yes. author and poet. And yes, so we're doing that next week, because I think it's coming out next week, actually. Actually being released next week. So it actually, you know, if you want to watch it, I believe it's on Filmstruck. It, it's on Filmstruck yeah. now, so you can watch it. Yeah, so... You can watch it with us. Yeah, so watch it, uh, and or just wait for us to do the review. Then you can watch it. You know, people are busy. They don't want to have time to watch movies. They want our suggestions, so we're going to do it. So... Until next time, we will see you later.